Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Office Blog Gaz. Office Blog here. here we are on Sports Edition. Been away for a few days, so uh, apologies on the uh, uploads of the videos. But if you uh, if you do like sports, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. It does help us grow, and we do appreciate it. We do. Uh, we do. Bit of baseball. Yeah. The there summer. Shoei Atani broke high school baseball. Oh. Now, did he play high school? I'm assuming he played high school baseball in Japan. Japan, yeah. Looks yeah. like Japan from the bottom right. But with the scoring, yeah. 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 I'm assuming. That, do you know what? I don't even know if he's Japanese or. What? He's got to be Japanese. He is Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. seen him play for Japan. Yeah, yeah you're right. I just right. might add a bit of a mind there. <laughs> What's it there? Let's get into it. Yeah. One pitch and a legend was born. Go on, did that say 160 miles? Oh, kilometers. Yeah, it was a kilometer. One pitch. That's still 100 miles an hour, right? Over 100 miles an hour. With this offering, Shohei Otani lit up a radar gun to a level then unrivaled by his high school peers, 160 kph, or roughly 100 miles per hour. No one in the fabled history of Japanese high school baseball had reached this apex, or at least not on anywhere near as big of a stage. Some of you might wonder, doesn't this thing happen at just about every perfect game showcase? You wouldn't be wrong. However, not in 2012, and certainly not from a guy who could also boost the power potential of a prime Hideki Matsui. Still, it might strike some as odd, maybe even preposterous, that this single high school pitch thrown 11 years ago would still have an impact today. But, and excuse me for saying this, you'd be wrong. Because, let's never forget this, no one had really heard of Shohei back then, and no one had considered what he could do was even possible, until that offering. When Shohei threw that famed 100 mile per hour pitch, he was playing for Hanamaki Higashi High School, coached by the legendary Hiroshi Sasaki. Like his now constant comparison, Babe Ruth, Otani lived in a dorm during high school, away from his family. People have likened Otani's baseball upbringing to a near religious one, similar to the Babes, because Sasaki's program demanded total dedication. No junk food, no girlfriends, very limited screen time, and hours and hours every day devoted to baseball. Ruth was literally taught and coached by monks, and he dwelled within the walls of an industrial school, where baseball became his overwhelming passion. But here's where the 100 mile per hour pitch becomes even more poignant. During his first year at Hanamaki Higashi in 2010, Sasaki didn't even pitch Otani. He played him everywhere except pitcher, even though Shohei could hit 87 miles per hour with his fastball at just 14. Sasaki didn't That's want to rush the prodigy's development after all. Otani was 6'2 even then, but very. I wonder if anyone else has thrown similar speeds. What? They're at the same age. You, you would have thought so, right? He's throwing I mean, 87 like, mile an hour at 14. I'm sure there's other people that can throw that sort of speed. Yeah, there's normally. always some, isn't there? Yeah, but it's not normal, no. But no, I'm just, you know, is it, what's the average, I wonder what, what the average pitch speed is for like high school. I would say about 70 to 80. 70 to 80, yeah, you probably, yeah. That's what I'd have in mind as well. But the odd one, you might get the odd one who might be able to go up to above 80. 80 yeah, yeah, 85. But the accuracy and everything they're throwing as well, isn't it? Yeah, at the no, age of 40. Crazy. I've never understood how like pitching is like very hard. Yeah, and I don't. I think people have the narrative that it's not as hard as it like it is. Yeah, it's a technique. Because it looks, it yeah. looks easier than it yeah. was. Like mm. trying to get a ball thrown away that quite decent amount far yeah. away in a tiny little box. Yeah, what is it? Twenty yards, twenty-two yards, or whatever. It's twenty-two like, yards. I would be off it every time, mm. mate. Yeah, hundred percent. We'll have to have a go with it, won't we? We will, but like, it's neck, can't I could easily in like it. if I put too much power in it, it could it's go in the stands. Yeah, you know what I mean. Get one of them nets with the square in the middle where it catches it for you. Yeah, you can throw it and see how many times you can hit it in the I'll net. just throw it at you and you can yeah. catch it. Actually. Yeah, I can do that as well. Yeah. Thin and could barely bench press the bar. The fact that Otani was even at a private school that was known for being elite when it comes to baseball was directly inspired by one person, a near contemporary of his at the time, Yusei Kikuchi, who currently pitches for the Toronto Blue Jays. But before we get more into that, I want to tell you a bit about today's sponsor. Okay, even as busy camp. And that's it. Best cumulative score regular season. An underdog thousand dollar underdog today. The upper night program. You say Otani. Kikuchi was the best high school pitcher in the country. A lefty who could touch the upper 90s with his heater. Otani wanted to follow in Kikuchi's footsteps and be the leader of this prestigious program. You say had gained acclaim and fame over the summer of 2009 when he led the team to the semifinals of the National High School Baseball Championship of Japan, aka Summer Koshen. Before we go further, we need to talk a little bit about what the Koshen means in Japan. There are two Koshen tournaments in Japan, the spring and the summer tournaments. Spring is an invitational, while summer pits all 4,000 high schools in the country in a single elimination battle to determine the country's huge champion. Huge in baseball. Look at how Japan's big the national. crowds are for a high school ba baseball. Baseball is huge in Japan and all that. I know, they love it. Yeah. Is it the biggest sport? Like the, the most popular sport? <sighs> or is it, I think it might be badminton. You know, I don't know what the uh, what the most played is and all that, but I know the, the, big, into, the big into soccer, the big into baseball. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure about basketball uh, or anything like that, but they've got they've got sports people like in like tennis. They've got sports people in golf. They've got sports people that compete on a global sort of like uh, who are very very good. But yeah. you know, um, 
I don't, I don't know what the number one sport is. I would guess it would be baseball if I had to guess. Yeah, probably, right? They televised, but it's summer that has a history that stretches back over a hundred years and is a Japanese touchstone along the lines of Hoosiers meets the Super Bowl. One of the main reasons that baseball players in Japan work as diligently as they do is to take their team to the Summer Koshen. Out of the 4,000 teams that begin, only 49 make it to the Hollow Koshen Stadium in Osaka in August. Each of the 47 prefects has its own tournament and sends the winner on to Osaka, though Tokyo and Hokkaido send two due to their massive size. These individual prefecture games are televised. In fact, so many people watch it on TV that the country's power grid is put under strain. Heroes emerge from the games, and fan favorites become national icons. Kikuchi joined a long list of warrior hurlers for his performance in 2009, when he bravely went out to pitch in a semifinal game with a broken rib. He was in agony, but tried to gut through it. His team lost, and he bravely shed tears of devastation, a tragic sight in front of millions watching at home. This is part of the spectacle of Koshen. There is one winner and 3,900 199 losers. What other tournament can claim numbers like this? Otani's parents let him make his own decision about where to attend high school. He could have gone to a public and they would have supported him, but the allure of being the next Kikuchi was too much to pass up. But there was something else that made Otani take notice of Yusei. Kikuchi was thinking of bypassing the MPP draft entirely and making himself an MLB free agent right out of high school. You see, Otani had made it no secret he wanted to go straight to the US to begin his career, just like Kikuchi had announced in 2009. No Japanese high schooler had ever done so. Ichiro, Daisuke, Matsui, Nomo, all had played an MPB before coming to the United States. Kikuchi was serious about being a pioneer. MLB scouts were watching and many teams expressed interest in signing him. Young Otani watched this drama unfold, with the best players, heroes from the summer Shen, go to rookie ball in Modesto now instead of staying in Japan and becoming near overnight superstars. In the end, Kikuchi was taken first overall by the Cebu Lions and stayed in Japan until he was eligible to be posted when he reached 27. Otani, however, had other ideas. Hiroshi Sasaki didn't just look at himself as a baseball coach. He was an educator and he wanted to make his players the best versions of themselves they could be on and off the field. He fervently believed that students needed goals and a plan to reach these goals, so he had players write down their own personal aims and refer to them often for guidance. Otani's goal for when he turned 18 was simple, play for an MLB team. He wrote this down during his first year in high school. But Sasaki was also a gardener, and he knew that plants needed a big pot in order to grow healthy and strong. He knew that Shohei was a special talent, and so he would have to set an especially lofty goal for his prized pupil, throwing 160 kph in high school. After all, Kikuchi had gained weight and added velo to his fastball during his time at the institution. The same could happen with Otani. The fact that Otani actually reached this goal almost disappointed Sasaki. To him, it meant that he'd actually set the bar too low, or the pot for his plant was too small. Later, he'd say that the goal should have been 163 for Otani. As for Shohei's goal, he was dead serious about not playing in Japan. He told every team in the MPB not to draft him, that he was definitely going to the show. And every team in Japan took him at his word, except one, the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters. But could they sign him? It was Otani's dream to be an MLB star. What could dissuade him? Well, after many long conversations about the bus rides to Modesto and Rookie Ball, where no one speaks Japanese and you stay in low-rent hotels and eat crummy food, all at the tender age of 18, Otani found himself leaning away from this original plan. So he stayed. Otani had saw the dark underside of American Pro Ball, one he'd have to spend at least a few years in, and had decided against the decision. Perhaps even more importantly, however, the ham fighters had also said, when you're ready to go, we'll post you. Another aspect of why he decided to stay was the fact that they had offered to let him pitch and hit, something no MLB club would guarantee. Guarantee. And here, the echoes of Babe Ruth are heard again. When leaving St. Mary's, Ruth signed his first contract with his hometown team, the Baltimore Orioles, then in the International League. They let him hit and pitch, a trend he continued even as he broke in with the Red Sox in 1914. If the Babe or Otani had started their careers under different circumstances, the majesty of their journey may have been greatly diminished. So, as we've established, the spring and summer Koshen tournaments earn baseball players in Japan eternal glory, and that 100 mile per hour pitch was the high water mark of Otani's high school career, at least on a national stage. However, it didn't take place at Koshen Stadium. Each high school player has three seasons to qualify for summer Koshen, or get invited to spring Koshen. Otani didn't pitch in 2010, but he did hit. Unfortunately, not quite enough for his team to advance to Osaka. Sasaki wanted to wait until Otani had been with the team for one summer before putting him on the mound, which he did in the fall. In 2011, during his second year in high school, Otani was now throwing between 93 and 95 miles per hour, a ridiculous mark for a 15-year-old. The reason Sasaki wanted to be careful with 15. Otani was that he was still growing, 
his body was still developing, and with his long arms and legs, issues can arise in the so-called growth plates, cartilage located at the end of long bones, where new growth is occurring in children and teens. Until growth plates close, they're kind of rubbery and can be susceptible to overuse injuries. And as 2011 summer Koshen approached, Otani started having some growth plate issues in his hip, and Sasaki didn't hesitate to scale back his pitching. Even though Hanamaki Higashi qualified for the summer Koshen by winning the Iweight Championship, in the first round, Sasaki didn't start Otani at pitcher, but put him in right field instead and batted him third. He ended up coming in to relieve and losing a heartbreaking 8-7 loss. He hit 93 on the radar gun with his fastest pitch and also featured a slow curve and sharp slider. His control was spotty, but the defense behind him was even spottier. At the plate, he went 1-3 for three with two RBIs on a single that nearly knocked down the left field wall. At this point, Otani might not have been a national hero or a worldwide phenomenon, but everything was set up for Otani's final push for greatness. In 2012, Otani would be an adult, in size and in age. That was the year that the best high school player in the world might lead Hanamaki Higashi High School to two championships, the Spring and Summer Koshen. Only five schools in Japanese history had done it, including Daisuke Matsuzaka in 1998. When you go to Asian countries though, like um, when you see what they're doing like Korea, Japan, if you're good at a certain thing over there and you're like a number one like global sort of phenomenon phenomenon right. they worship you no they get yeah, worshipped yeah, yeah. Like whereas that. we don't have it in the uh, in this, but certainly in Britain we don't we kind of like tend to put them down a little bit well the we media still, does the media do yeah so like because the media worse. is like if it's it has to be negative for it to be a thing yeah they want it, they want people to fail they push them to fail yeah and then they're waiting for that waiting for that first sort of like thing that you, people can come in and fail even we we've got some of the best people in sport in especially in uh, in soccer. Some of the best people in sports, some of the best coaches, some of the best players, some of the best backroom staff, some of the best medics and all that that go in. But the, the media just want them to fail at all, all different levels. Mm. You know, when you see like what they do, even even bands, you know, when you look at people like BTS or you know, things like that, when they do that, you see how much the, the praise they get in the, um, in the media over there. Yeah, it's true. So, I guess it's one of them that they don't feel like they have as many like, famous yeah, people so. around the yeah. world and they're like... Yeah, maybe that could be it. It's yeah. one of them. Mm. But they are worships, aren't they? Well, wow, you like, see when like Hyung Min Song goes to South Korea yeah, and stuff, no. it's crazy. There yeah. are like thousands meet him at the airport. Yeah, it's crazy. But you see him now at the grounds over here coming to watch him. I know, yeah. Mm. We threw over 800 pitches in two weeks of the summer leg, but it wouldn't happen for Shohei. Spring was invitational, but still a national sensation. All of the games are indeed played at Koshen Stadium, built in 1924 and modeled after the polo grounds. The infield dirt is considered sacred, and players scoop it up for keepsake after games. Otani's team was scheduled to play powerhouse Osaka Toyn High School, led by a pitcher many scouts had ranked higher as a prospect than Otani at the time, current Oakland A's reliever Shintaro Fujinami. After all, Fujinami was another lanky righty who threw hard, but with arguably better off-speed pitches at the time, making him a very coveted asset on a baseball team. In fact, in the MPB draft, Fujinami was the first pick overall, or to be precise, he was named by four teams to be their first round selection, the most of any player. A lottery allowed the Hanshin Tigers to sign him. The matchup between the two superstars turned out to be a bit of a dud, with Toyn and Fujinami prevailing 9-2. Otani started and gave up all the runs, five of which were earned. He fanned 11, but also walked 11. The raw stuff was evident, but the command was sketchy at best. In the sixth inning, the team suffered a defensive collapse, and the route was on. The bright spot for Shohei was the homer he did manage to club off of Fujinami. Toyn went on to win the Spring Koshen, while Otani had to go back to Iwei and then grind through the Prefecture Tournament with the hopes of qualifying for a return to Koshen for the All Japan Tournament in August. The pressure was immense. One loss at any level of Koshen spells doom and the team is eliminated. There is no special invite for teams that have great or notable players. One stumble and the season ends. And so, once again we circle back to July 19th, 2012 in the sixth inning of the Iwei Regional Semifinal, when Otani delivered that famous pitch that sent shockwaves not only throughout his own country, but the world. No one had ever hit that number at that young age in that tournament. No one. And the guy who did it was also the best hitter on the team. In the spring Koshen, Otani's max velo had sat at 95, about the same as what Kakushi and Fujinami threw. Fast, but not necessarily out of the ordinary. He also featured a curveball and slider, but again, he couldn't control his pitches. By summer, Shohei was starting to repeat his delivery with more consistency, and suddenly 95 turned into 100, a completely different beast. And the world started to take notice. But fate can be cruel. 
In the final of the I Wait tournament, Otani struck out 15, but again, the defense behind him faltered and his team lost, depriving him of the chance to finish his career at Summer Koshen with the ultimate prize. The star instead was Fujinami, who led Toyn to victory with a pair of shutouts in the semis and finals. So, Toyn won both Koshens in 2012, with Otani coming away with a big goose egg. But still, he had left a mark on the sporting world that would not soon be forgotten. He had proved it was possible to be a superstar two-way player on the country's biggest amateur stage, paving the way for a career in both the Sorry, is there another two-way player in the in the MLB right now, or is it just Shohei Itani? Don't know, actually. I'm not sure. Have to let us know in the you comments if there is. Now, yeah. the, um, what I was going to say, though, he probably ain't quite happy with his, uh, what's his, $800 million contract. <laughs> so rather than win a coach in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The MLB that we haven't seen in the history of this great sport. Well, Shohei Otani is a big manga fan. The Japanese. Someone just sent me about, haven't they? Oh yeah, it's cool. I've just got it's really cool, it? isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go and get it? I get it. Where it's is it? It's in my office. Oh. So someone just give us a bat. So they sent me a bat over from the USA from Louisville Slugger, personalized Justin. Uh, very kind of him to send that oh, over. How cool is this? Can you read that? There? Cool. He's got all the trophies on the back of it, or the other side yeah. of what we've won last year. All five trophies that we won. The thing is, is like I said this to you as well. When we see them like break the bat on their knee, this is heavy. <laughs> it's proper. It's like hard. A, that's a proper Louisville slugger. That's from the factory, Louisville slugger how, factory. How are you breaking that on yeah. your knee? I don't get that. Yeah, the guy who sent it to me works at Louisville Slugger, and uh, he said to me ages ago he's made one sort of thing, and then sent me the photographs of it, and then it turned up, and it's uh, lovely, isn't it? It's very nice. Yeah, it's nice. Huh? It's pretty, like lovely color. Bloody heavy. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Heavier than I thought so, it would be. I'll just, uh, I'm going to try and take it down to uh, to City to get it uh, signed by some of the players. Yeah. Um, but I just don't want to turn up with it going like, uh, tell me where Haaland is. <laughs> <laughs> like waving this around, you know what I mean? So uh, I'll have to get someone to, uh, who I know who uh, can take it in there to get it signed. Nice. But yeah, nice, very nice. Haven't seen in the history of this great sport. Matches his pink one. Shohei Otani is a big manga fan. The Japanese cartoons that feature otherworldly characters. Growing up, he read Major, a pitcher who throws 102 and hits prodigious home runs. Sound familiar? As Otani has said, just getting to the summer Koshan is very difficult. You ought to know, having been knocked out of it without winning his prefecture tournament in the past. If anything, this shows how well prepared Japanese high schoolers are, that a true all-time talent, possibly the greatest player in history, could take the bump, strike out 15, and still take the loss. But, as we said before, the true majesty of that summer, regardless of the outcome, wasn't who won the final game. Instead, it came in a sports-altering moment, in a single pitch that broke the mold of what high school baseball players could do, and what they might be allowed to do at the next level. Today, Shohei was the most famous baseball player in the world, and perhaps the most impactful, but let's not forget, it all had to start somewhere. And for many around the world, it was in 2012, in the summer Koshin, when Otani changed everything. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and click this playlist. Yeah, cool good video. It's a bit yeah. of an insight on like the uh, high school and college of Japan and stuff as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I always, I always find it. I always love watching sport from different places of the world and watching sports stars that come about from like Japan or wherever it may be. Yeah. Um, and it's, I always, it baffles me that you can see players like I see some Indian cricketers, right? Who are absolutely the hand-eye coordination is some of the best you've ever seen. Yeah. But then I always think, I wonder why there's no Indian baseball players. I wonder why there's no baseball league in India. Well, it's, it's a, bit, it's a similar up, sport. It? It's similar, it's a similar like, sport because you don't why, really need, there, why is there no American cricketers? But you don't need many. You don't need a massive amount of. Uh, there probably is. There's probably, probably more money in baseball than there is in cricket in certain countries. Yeah. There's more money in cricket in India than uh, the most places. Yeah. Um, but the the hand eye coordination, the, the the equipment you need is a, a bat, a ball, and that's it really. And a glove maybe. Yeah. But you need gloves in cricket as well because the ball's quite hard to if you're going to be a wicket keeper. Not yeah, no. not not necessarily. Like, there's only one person in, in cricket that's a glove. Yeah. glove. yeah, but then you know, it's uh, but then you, you know you obviously I don't know how many most kids will play like wiffle ball or you know uh, like it's just ball. what you grow up on, isn't it? You're yeah. not going to grow up mm. playing cricket for so many years and then decide yeah. I'm going to change play baseball instead. No, but I just wonder how I many. Just wonder it's just because it's a similar sort of like setup with a ball coming towards you with hand-eye coordination that you're swinging a bat at a ball. Then I've seen Freddie Flintoff hit a baseball. And he can he can crack it, he can hit it far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's like home run it sort of thing. But then you look at, I don't know, I look at some of the base, some of the cricket players that played in India who were superb. And I think just don't know what anything's. I wonder why. You know, but I guess yeah, they're happy playing cricket. Yeah. You know, it's like a rugby, it's like the rugby NFL type thing as well, isn't it? The crossover. Now they're a lot more different though. Yeah, they are very different sports. Yeah, yeah. but you get what I'm saying though. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. But you see, yeah, it's good insight, like you say. Anyway, hope you guys uh, liked it. Don't forget like and subscribe. 
and we'll catch you on the next one cheers cheers